Hello, 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 hello. Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. This, we're in September already. That means we only got a couple more months to go. And uh, we're going to celebrate the Lord's birthday. That's what we celebrate in December the 25th. That means Christmas is coming, so get ready. But anyhow, I just want to welcome each and every one of you here to Jesus is Lord Ministries. I thank uh, Pastor Mike and uh, the, the congregation here and the staff that helps and, and gets us uh, what we need and everything and, and just opens up. I thank uh, Stephen, Pastor Mike's son, because I tell you what, he's here faithfully every Tuesday morning with me, praying with me and, and uh, opening up and doing the, uh, what he needs to do to get me where you are. So I want to welcome you today and I just want to thank God for being here today. God has put placed something on my heart special today and uh, I'm, by, I'm still in the red letters. I thought I was going to, going to end it last week when we were done, but uh, guess what? <laughs> we're not. So the Lord opened up something to me when Pastor Mike was preaching Saturday, and I want to share something with you about Saturday, I'm, I'm sorry, Sunday morning. When he was preaching Sunday morning, now I've heard a lot of messages from Pastor Mike, and, and, and they've all been good. Okay, understand what I'm saying. Now, I'm not lifting Pastor Mike up. I'm lifting the word that comes out of him up, okay? And if you didn't get a chance to, to watch Sunday morning service, if you wasn't here, I want you to, I, I ask you to take and go back to this Sunday morning, which would have been, uh, I think, the 1st of September at 10 o'clock he was here. And I'm telling you, that message was incredible. I mean, like I said, I've heard many messages from Pastor Mike, but that message was, was just, I mean, it was right on. And it was powerful the way he brought it forth. So, I'm, you know, if you want to get blessed and blessed by the Word of God, listen to Sunday morning. And uh, also, Sunday night we had a special guest here, which his name was Dr. Mike too, but his name was Dr. Mike Sean. Uh, Sean, yeah. Saul, I'm sorry, Dr. Mike Saul, and uh, he preached fantastic message, and he, and what he did is what Pastor Mike preached, he came along and the similar kind of message, but not the same message, but it was basically the, the God speaking about the authority and dominion of the church through him. He added to it, yes. Thank you. He added to what Pastor Mike was saying. So if you, if you didn't get a chance to see Sunday morning, I'm saying to you, watch it. Why? Because it will bless, how they say it? Some people say it'll bless your socks off. Hallelujah. And like I said, I'm not lifting the man up. I appreciate Pastor Mike. I love him dearly. But it's the word of God that flows out of his mouth that, that will bless you. So let's, you and I, get together here. And, and see what we're going to do here today. Uh, I want to make our our decree and proclamation. I get it out. Proclamation and huh? Declaration and proclamation and decree. And as I do this, I just want to explain real quick what it what what it is to 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 say uh, to proclaim the word of God. See what it means is this. The, uh, the word proclaim it comes out, and then in the Latin words it means, now I'm not a scholar, I'm reading this from somebody else that, that studied it, and I'm reading it out of, of, you know, so it says to shout forth. See, when we read the Word of God, when we see the Word of God, oh my goodness, we need to shout it forth. So let's, before we even get started in our decree, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you. And we praise you that this is the day that you have made. And we can rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Father, I pray for all of those that are in the sound of my voice, all the people here listening today that's here in this sanctuary, in this tabernacle. Father, I thank you for them. Father, I thank you for those that are watching on video or uh, Facebook or, or YouTube, whatever it is. You know, right now it's Tuesday morning, 10.05, the 9th of, of Sep the 3rd of September. But 
You might be watching it on the 4th or the 5th or maybe today, live stream. But if you, if you are, be blessed. Be blessed. Because whenever you're listening to this, the Holy Spirit will speak to you as he speaks now. Don't, don't be afraid that you're missing something because it was yesterday or today or, or it was a couple days ago. No, 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 no. The word of God will not come back void. So let's understand that. So let's just thank God that this is the day that he's made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. And in Philippians 1, 6, it says, I am convinced. I love this. This is the Amplified Version. I am convinced and sure that he, Jesus, who began a good work in me and you will continue that work until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, until he comes back to take us home. Developing and perfecting and be bringing it to the full completion in me and in you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There's nothing that God starts that he won't finish. If you, if you would just go along with him and, and stand fast. When he says go to the left, go to the left. When he said go to the right, go to the right. When he said go straight, go straight. Because I'm telling you, my friend, I'm telling you, brother and sister, I'm telling you, mom and dad, I'm telling you, aunt and uncle, listen, when we proclaim the word of God and we know that he has begun, he has put it in us to begin, that work, that good work, Everything we do for Jesus is good. I'm going to say that again because I don't think half of you believe me. Everything we do for Jesus is good. It's when we turn ourselves away from Jesus and try to do it on our own that things fall apart. Are you with me? I've been there, done that. Come on now, don't be lying to yourself and say... You, Say that you have not, but you know, we've all been there. We've all turned. Well, I think it's better this way. See, but Jesus knows the way. He knows the truth, and, and he is the way and the truth. But he, what I'm saying is this. He will take you for from the beginning to the end and will perfect everything in between in you. You missed a good time to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's say our degree. Or to, to create, I'm for some reason I'm messing that word all up today. I'm sorry, I'm just so excited about what God's doing here, and and when I get into this, you're going to understand why I got actually I got two messages for you together in one. I'm hoping to get to both of them, but let's go. Say this with me: The Lord is with me today. I am blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. I am the head. And not the tail. I am above only. And not beneath. I can. Do all things. Through Christ Jesus. Who strengthens me. Greater. Is he. That's in me. Than he. That is in the world. If God. Before me. Who can be against me? Mm, mm, mm. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, I shall condemn with the word of God. The blood of Jesus covers me, and by his stripes I am healed. I find favor and good understanding with God and with man. My God, just point your fingers at yourself and say, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You notice that it's not me supplying the needs, but it's my God. Hallelujah, it's my God. It's my God. Like I said, the proclamation, you know, that we have 
it, you know, we, we find out, this is what Hebrews 3, 3, 1 says. It says that we are to, it says, and Jesus is the high priest of our confession. See, when we speak the word of God, when we speak Jesus, he is our high priest. And being our high priest, we are to confess him. We are to speak things good about him. We are to speak to him. He is our high priest. Just look at your neighbor and say, he's my high priest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to get somewhere here today. Now, before you get mad and turn me off right away, please listen. I've been, I've been praying about this message for quite a, quite a while. And I haven't felt the release of it for two reasons. Number one, Pastor Mike doesn't talk about money here. He doesn't talk about, well, he's been talking about a little bit about giving. He doesn't talk about, and I'm not putting him down for that. I'm just saying that's the kind of church we have because he knows God supplies all his needs. See, so he don't have to beg you, go, if you give me $100, I'll give you a, a piece of paper. Or if you give me this, I'll get you. No, no, no. See, Pastor Mike don't do that. He just, he, he's just plain and simple, and he says, hey, God provides. If you give, you will get. You know, and, and that's the way it's been. And so I respect that because I respect this pulpit because he is the head of, now, now listen to what I'm saying. He is the head of this pulpit. God is, and Jesus is the head of him. And when you stand behind this pulpit, Pastor Mike has, now listen to me, Pastor Mike has to answer for us that's speaking the word. And if we don't speak the word, that means he's got to come back and correct things. I've done that before. When we were pastoring a church, we would have a people in, come in and speak and stuff. And oh my, they were just so off the wall about stuff. You know, so the next Sunday I had to go and instead of able to preach what I, uh, I had to go and correct what they were preaching. And see, and that's what, that's the reason I respect this, this, this uh, pulpit so much. Because when Pastor Mike says, you're allowed to preach, I said, thank you. But I, but I do it, and I watch him, and I hear what he's preaching on, and then I hear what he doesn't preach on, and then I say, you know, I, we had a conversation. Pastor Mike, I like to, you know, talk about, and now don't shut me off when I say this, about tithing and giving. He said, okay, he said, well, just, you know, I, I knew in my spirit I was supposed to wait because I knew what was, you know, that, I didn't get the okay. I didn't get the okay because I had to respect it. But one Sunday, Pastor Mike says, it's okay. He just looked at me and said, it's okay to preach about giving. And once he said that, <laughs> I was released. I was, and, and thank God, you know. And it's not because I'm so great about preaching on giving or receiving. It's just because, and he understands, we, we are givers and we've given our whole life to God. We don't only give money, we give ourselves to God. We give everything, every aspect to God. We've given, you know, I can tell you we've given away cars, we've given away furniture, we've done this. And I ain't giving my house away, though. i got to tell you that. That's, you know, I haven't done that because my wife loves our house and I love our house. But what I'm saying is this, is God has taught me through the years how to give. I remember back in, it was, what was it, honey? 81 or 82? 81 we got saved, correct? Or 80? 81 we got born again. Okay? When we got born again, we were in a church that the pastor, he wasn't a, he, he, he spoke about tithing. He didn't beg for money. He didn't beg for your offering, but he spoke about it and it pricked my wife and my hearts to, to understand that God expects us to be obedient to his word and bring in our tithes to our storehouse. Now, don't shut me down, please. I, I, I heard the devil say, well, once you start talking about this, everybody's going to shut you down. Please don't shut me down. Don't let the devil, make the devil a liar, would you? Because he is a liar. I just want you to hear some of the things that God is saying about tithing. Now, it's, it's up to you. 
to, to be obedient to God or to be, I've got to say it, disobedient. Because that's how much I believe if you bring in your, your obedience to God. Now listen, but here's, here's something about Sunday morning. Okay, and, and, and this was, and this is Jesus. I know it's, most of you saying, well, tithing was for the old covenant. Ah, uh, yeah, no, yes, no. It's a, it's a no. Tithing is for today. And I'm going to prove it to you. Jesus talked about tithing. He talked about money. He talked about giving. Okay, and some pastors, he also he talked about giving, 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 giving. So you've got to give and give and give and give. He gave us, no, you, you know, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about having a heart to give, having a heart to be obedient to God. See, we, met, we want so much from God. We want God to do everything. He want, we want God to open doors that no man can shut behind, you know, when he opens them. I and mean, he wants us to shut doors that no man can open when he shuts it so we won't get harmed. But you know what? A lot of us is walking in disobedience to God. And if you walk in disobedience, God may, I'm not saying, I'm not God. So, you know, if I was God, I wouldn't, I would just, never mind. But God is not a God that does not love you and does not care for you. But God is a God that does require obedience. Did I say that okay? Is that okay? Shake your head so I can hear it rattling or do, do something. I know it's a tough message because it's a tough message for me to bring forth because of, of the day that we're living in. I mean, we're living in hard times, my friend, and I hate to tell you that. Well, I don't hate to tell you that. I've got to tell you the truth. That's the truth. We're living. We, you go to the grocery store, you're paying 50% more for groceries. Eggs. I went and got a, a dozen of eggs the other and I looked at them, and I said, oh, my God, they're almost $5 a dozen for eggs that you used to get from 79 cents. Or you going down the highway and you got these big signs, brown eggs for sale, a dollar a dozen. You pull in, you get some good brown eggs, and they're big eggs. But now they're a little bitty, they call extra large, and they're no more larger than the small eggs. And they're not extra large, they're just large. But you understand what I'm saying? Everything is up now. The price of gasoline, everybody said, well, it's coming down. Well, it's only coming down because of, but I'm not going to go there. But the price of gasoline is still almost $1.80 more than it was. And we got to understand, all this costs us dollars. But, now, here where I'm coming from. With God, it's okay. Because they can raise the prices as much as they want. Because my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. My needs. I have that to hold on to. That's a promise from God. Because that promise made, I can, uh, I can afford, I don't like to. You understand me? I can afford to pay the, for the eggs. I can afford to pay the gasoline prices. Why? Because I am a giver. I am a giver, and I am a tither. Now, I want to go back to what Pastor Mike, uh, see, I thought I was getting off of this red letter. I thought maybe last week I was done, but I'm not. So, Pastor Mike read this scripture out of Matthew 28, and I'm just going to read it real quick to you, because there's something in here. I, he read it, and I'm saying, Lord, what am I missing? I'm missing something out of this scripture. I can't get a hold of it. And, 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 and you know, because then he brought this, this tithing to me. And, and he, when he wrote, when I spoke this scripture, I said, now, wait a minute. What are you saying, Lord? You're, what am I missing here in this scripture that's going to tie tithing to today? You with me? See, and I want to read it to you. And, and it says, Jesus approached them. Now, understand, uh, Jesus had gone. He's back. And the doubters are there. It even says right up above, it says, and, and some worshipped him, fell down and worshipped him, but some was doubters. So see, there, there is doubters everywhere. Okay, so if you're a doubter, 
you fall into that category, you're, you're not alone. I hate to say that. Okay, but if you're a worshiper and you fall down to worshiping, whoa, glory be to God. Okay, let me read this real quick because I've I got to move on here. Jesus approached them and breaking the silence said unto them, All authority, now I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. Pastor read it out of the, the New King James, or the King James. All authorities, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Has been given to you. Then he says, go therefore, oh, that's the King James, go then and make disciples of all, keep that word all in mind, of all nations, baptizing them into the name, now listen, baptize them into the name of, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not done, my friend. The baptism of being baptized in Jesus is not done. And the baptized being in the Father is not done. It's still today as it was yesterday. Okay, I, I can't go there on that. That, that. That's a different teaching altogether. Then he says in verse 20, now listen. This is where I had the, I don't know, maybe, maybe you've never been there. You see a scripture, oh, you pick it up right away. But sometimes I'm a little slow. Can I say that? You know, I'm picking up something, not because I'm stupid or, or anything, but it's just because I keep reading over what the Lord is trying to say. And that's what happened to me with this scripture. Because I wanted to find out today about tithing, what God says about tithing today. And he says in verse 20, teaching, now listen, teaching them. Now he just told us to go into all the nations and to all the world and, and to everybody, to all the churches, and teaching them to observe, uh, observe everything, now here it is, that I have commanded you. He's telling us, this is what I missed. He's telling us everything that he's taught us up to this point. When we go out and preach the gospel, we are to preach to them everything that Jesus talked about. Everything. And everything that's in this Bible. Everything. We are to talk about that. Why? Because he says so right here. It says, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you, and behold, and this is the good part. See, some of, that's the reason I can stand here today and, and preach this knowing that I'm okay. Because here's what it says. He says, and behold, I am with you all the days. To the very close end of all ages. Amen and let it be. He is with us today. He's with me today. That's the reason I don't have to worry about preaching on tithing. Because Jesus says, I'm with you. When you preach and teach everything that I've taught. Now let's go back to, to here to, uh, let me see, I want to go to Matthew 20, 23. And I'm telling you, I can see why. If you read this out of the, the Amplified Bible, I can see why they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted to destroy Jesus. Because he wasn't afraid of them. He spoke to them. And, and he says some things here that, oh, glory be to God, I hope he never says to me. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders. Pretenders. <laughs> Hypocrites, for you give a tenth of your mint and of your dill. That's dill pickle, I, I don't know, dill juice or what, some kind of dill. And, help me again, cumin. That's some kind of a, a herb or something. He says you give that 10%, that tithe to them up from that stuff. Then he goes on to say, and have neglected and omitted the more important matters of the law, right, and justice, and mercy, and fidelity, these things 
you ought to particularly to have done without without doing it. Negligence. You blind guy. He calls them blind. Filtering out the gnat, but yet you're gulping up the camel. He's saying that we bring our tithes, that they bring their tithes in, and they do this to show, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. And that's improper. But he's saying, but, you know, as they do that, he's saying, but you're neglecting the other things. See, tithe is not just bringing in your tenth. It's also part of being righteous. It's also part of being holy. It's also part of being obedience to God. And they brought them in, but they forgot to tell the people. When you do that, you're being obedience to you're being obedient to God. It's so important that we understand that we we need to bring in <clears throat> our tithes. Listen to what Deuteronomy fourteen twenty two says. It says, "Thou shalt truly." Now I'm reading out of the King James. Now, thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seeds that the field bring forth your harvest or will bring forth from year to year or day to day. See, when, when, when we bring in our tithes and we know that, that we, we, we've brought forth, so now my seed or whatever I need can increase. But if you don't bring in your tithe, you're not going to get the increase. Tithing is not something that is optional. Did I say that right? It is not optional. Optional. It's not. My friends, let me tell you something. You say, well, I can't afford the tithe. You don't understand. But you don't understand God's principle. You You can't afford not the tithe. If you want to know the truth. Because, see, when you bring in, and you know, Fred Price said this many years ago, and we were just young Christians at the time, and I understood what he was saying. He said, you know, sometimes we have to start with our tithes, maybe just a part of it, and work our way up to that tenth. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but... But he said it, and that, that made sense to me at the time. Because, you know, I'm saying, well, maybe I, don't, I can't give the whole tenth. But see, that fell through quick for me because God had already quickened me that the tenth that I bring in is his. Whatever our tenth is. I mean, right now, I'm, and I'm not talking about just tenth. You'll hear Pastor Mike say that, you know, he gives his tithe is way beyond the tenth. And, and I believe so was ours. You know, I couldn't tell you what our tithe is or what it wasn't, you know, or what it's going to be tomorrow. But I just know that when my wife writes out the check, it, it's way beyond what we, what we brought into our house. And, and you know what? And then we give it. We bring our tithes to the storehouse. We pray over it. You know, God says when you bring in, on, bring in your tithes and offering, to pray over it. Ask God's blessing upon it. See, get your tithes ready at home before you come to church and pray over it. And that's how you'll see that God will bless you. Am I doing all right so far? I mean, I know this is tough for you because it's tough for me. So just bear with me, would you please? And then in Proverbs, verses uh, 9 through 10, I'm going to read this real quick. And also, uh, let me see here, 9 through 10. I want to read this uh, in a different different spectrum. Uh, but it's perspective. Okay? So just hang in there with me, if you would, please, till I get to where I want to be. In, what did I say? Proverbs 3, 9. Now listen to what it says. It says, honor, honor, honor. Do you have a definition of Honor. My definition is to show forth my gratefulness to him. My definition of honoring him is for him, 
to have all the glory. My definition of honoring him is everything I have, he owns. Because I would not have it without him. I would not have it. Honor the Lord with, with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. See, he's not saying, you know, just because you get it, you don't have to honor. He, then he says in verse 10, So shall your barns be filled with plenty. You saying, well, he's talking about sowing seed in the ground. Yes, he is. And when you sow seed in the ground, what happens? It becomes something. If you ever heard Pastor Mike talk about their garden, I'm not a gardener. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't plant things with seed, with physical seeds and stuff. Okay, I'm not that. My wife started planting some flowers some flowers and she started planting these little strawberry patches and she came in yesterday and she had a whole handful of little bitty strawberries no bigger than my thumb and she was so proud of those strawberries look what I got she says so I had to rejoice with her but I didn't work on that so I wasn't excited as she was but she planted it and she seen the growth of that so me, when I plant my tithe into the storehouse, I see the growth of that coming back to me in ways that I'm able to afford what the prices are out there in the world. Now, I grown won't complain about them just like you and just like everybody else because nobody likes to see high prices because there's a lot of other things you can do with your money besides spending it on, you know, I mean, we need food and gas and all that. But if the extras that you have that you wouldn't have to pay so much, you could do a lot of other things with it, like seeing somebody that's in, that's in need, seeing their needs being met and helped. Okay? So, for, uh, and I want to read Malachi 3, 10, and 11. And we all know Malachi. We've probably, this probably been burnt into your spirit from day one. And, and we most, most of us, we, we ignore it. But here it goes. Okay, you ready? Bring you all. How much is all? All is all, and that's all there is to it. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Now, I want to stop right there. See, when we bring our tithes into the storehouse, but he was talking also, when you, when you bring up the, the, the fruit that you've grown, or the the, the the corn or the peas or whatever you grow, and you bring a tenth of that into the storehouse. See, that's why there's going to be meat in his house. Why? So, he, so, so a man can gobble it up and make waste of it? No. So that it can be spread to those that are in need. I believe that. I believe when I bring my, you said, but you're giving it to a man. You're, yeah, no, I'm, I, I am, but I'm not. Because I trust God to take what I'm given and to increase it to help meet the needs of those that don't have. And that's what he's saying here. He said, bring in your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And then he goes on to say, and I love this, and this is what grabbed me when we first started in this Christian walk with God, this is what grabbed me. It, because it was one of the first things. And I, and I don't know how many times we can go in the Bible and see God says these things. But here's what he says. He says, prove me. Prove me. What do you mean prove me? Well, I've done that before. I've given offerings. I've given tithes. I've given everything that I've had, and there's times that I needed stuff. And I looked at this scripture, and I said, God, we're tithers. And as tithers, you said to prove you. So I'm given, and I need you to return to me what I need. And every time it comes back. But see, we, we pray over our tithes. We, we pray over it. We give it. And then we are blessed. 
And that's what you need to do. See, don't look at, I'm giving my tenth to a man. You're not giving it to a man. You're not giving it. You're bringing it into God's house so that there can be meat in his house, so that there can be a supply in his house, if I can say that, so there can be a supply in his house so that you can prove to him, or he can prove to you that if you're obedient to him, he will open up the windows of heaven. I'm going to finish reading this because this is where we're going with this. He says, And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, that there shall not be room enough for you to receive. How many of you like to have blessings that you ain't got enough room to receive? How many? Think about it. How would you like to have a blessing from God? So, so big that you ain't got room enough to receive. Remember what Psalms 23 says? Uh, he fills my cup, overfloweth my cup. That's the same thing he's talking about here. He overflows us with, with his blessings, with his goodness. Now, you might say, well, how can I have room enough not to receive? See, we're thinking physically. Think spiritually. That's what I want you to think. Because, see, when we think spiritually, we think, God, these blessings that I'm walking in, these miracles that I'm walking in, these people that I'm able to see that are in need, I'm able to say to them, not because of me, but because of the Lord. I could say, Lord, do you want me to help them? And he'll say, stupid, that's what you're here for. And I'll say, okay, I'm sorry. So, and I help them. Why? Because I have overflowing abundance and I need to give. I, I go into a restaurant and I'll see somebody, I don't care whether I know them or not, and I'll pay for their meal, and, I'll, and they'll say to me, why did you do that? I'll say to them, because I needed to bless somebody today, because, and you just happen to be that one person to bless. You understand? When you get to the point where you can bless others, you don't have to worry about the grocery store prices. I mean, yes, you're concerned about them. You don't have to worry about the gas prices. Yes, you're concerned about them. But you know that God's going to supply your need. Why? Because he's God. And he says, if you're obedient to me, this I will do for you. This I will do for you. Here, and it goes on to say, room enough not to receive. And listen, now we're talking, you're talking about giving to the church and the people that, you know, you don't know for sure. Well, here, here's what happens. When you give, and you give honestly with a a good heart, with a faithful heart, with a joyful heart. It says, I, and this is God speaking, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for you. In other words, for your sake, he says. He, he's the one that's trying to steal your blessings because you're obedient to God. God says that he will rebuke them. He will take them and stop them from taking what you get. He said, and it goes on to say, it says, and he shall not. In other words, the devourer shall not destroy your fruit of your ground or the fruit of that you're, what you're giving out of your pocket or what you're giving from, from what you work for and, and you're bringing your tithes in. And you're bringing it in. And, and it says, Neither shall your vines cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. See, what he's saying is this. When you bring in your tithes, and the devourer raises the prices of everything that makes it unreachable, God says, don't worry about that. He can't stop you because I'm going to rebuke it and you're going to have enough to pay it. Now, I even heard that people that rent rents houses and apartments, that their prices went up. You know, I don't know. I don't rent, so. But I also know that the prices of housing going up. You know, but if you, if you trust God and be obedient to what God is saying and bring in 
your tithes to the storehouse, then, then he will rebuke the devourer for you. Some of you say, why is it that I always have to go through this? Why is it that I'm always going through this? Why is it that I'm always having lack? I'm, I'm going to challenge you since you said it. I'm going to challenge you. I'm glad you asked me that question. Why is it that you're always having lack? Why is it that you're never having enough? Why is it that, you know, it just seems like I, I, I can't make ends meet? I'm going to challenge you. You take, and whatever it is, and you take your tithe, you ask God, how much do you want me to start with? The tithe means a tenth. So that means if you, make, if you got a $100 bill, then $10 of that belongs to God. That's the way I look at it. But you pray about it and see what God says. Okay? You know, because that's the way we are. We, you know, I think I told you this story before, but I'm telling you again. Maybe you didn't hear it, maybe you did. When we, when I fell 61 feet, and I was laying on the ground and I was praying, and then they took me to the hospital, and then the doctors trying to find what all I broke it and everything else. But when I got home, and through that, I couldn't work, and, and our income cut down like zip. And we couldn't even afford a loaf of bread. But we kept giving our tithes. We kept giving our tithe to the, to the Lord. And as we done that, one day we needed a nickel. Now listen to me, five cents. Now this was back, what, 80, 83? So understand this. A nickel, it may have not been much, it may have been a lot, I don't know, but that's what I needed to get a loaf of bread. So I go to the mailbox one day, and there's one dollar and a quarter in, a, in an envelope in the mail. It doesn't say who it's from, just got my, my name and address on it. So I take it out, and I say, God, thank you. Thank you. I go home to walk up to, look what we got, Rhonda. God's blessed us. We got a dollar and a quarter. Now, you're laughing at that. But let me tell you something. That meant something to us. That meant that God proved himself. He proved himself to us. And I said to her, I said, look what we got. We got, our, we, we got the nickel that we needed. Plus, and then the, all of a sudden you hear the, the devil whisper in your ear, well, what can you do with a dollar and a quarter? And that's probably what some of you are saying. What can you do with a dollar and a quarter? Well, let me tell you what I did, or we did. We took 25 cents back and gave it to the Lord. Why? Because all we needed was a nickel, and he gave us a dollar and a quarter. Think about that. Think about all we needed was a nickel, but he gave us a dollar and a quarter. So in return, I give back to the Lord. And you know what? Things starting to open up blessings. I could tell you how I pulled up to a gas station with a $5 bill in my pocket, and that's all we had to live on till the next, to the end of the week. And I'm putting that $5 in the gas tank, and all of a sudden somebody comes out the door and hands, hands me $5 and says, there, I'm paying for your gas for you. People that I, that I didn't even know. You walk up into the store, let me take care of that for you. See, because we were tithers, and even though I was hurt, our income was down, we still gave to the Lord. And that's what you need to do, my friend. That's what we need to do. We need to come with an attitude that I'm giving to the Lord. I want to read something here real quick to you. Let me see where I'm at. Okay. Tithe is a measure of your obedience. Your tithe is the measure of your obedience. And offering is a measure of your generosity. You hear the difference? See, I, when you give something, when you come to church and you go in your, when the time for the offering, you go in your pocketbook and you pull out a couple dollars and dust flying all over the place because you ain't opened your pocketbook for a week and dust is flying all over the place and you put it in there and you're saying I'm, that, that you're giving your tithes. That's not your tithe. That is an offering. That is an offering. God says about his offering, if you give, it shall be given to you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, and running over. But when you tithe, 
He says, I will open the windows of heaven and I will pour out blessings that you're not even able to receive. Enough of blessings that you have to give them away because you've got so much. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your time, your talent, your, 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 your aspect of what you're doing, of what you have, that you need to, need to move out of your house and stuff. You need to clean house sometimes. And I looked at my wife just now, and yeah, I got the eyeballs. Because so she knows I, I'm a, I'm a uh, how does she, a hoarder? Is that the word? I like to call it a collector, but she calls it a hoarder. So, and there's a difference in my eyes, not to hers. But anyhow, you're giving... You need to give your tithe with gratitude, with a grateful heart. i got to go. I'm running out of time again. Time just seems to be against me all the time when I'm here. No, I can't say that. No, time, time is good. It just runs by so fast. Listen to what Psalms 100 says, 104. See, when we give, this is, this is, this is what we can do. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, what does this have to do with the red letters? Well, I didn't have a chance to get through what Jesus talked about, about giving and, and stuff. But if I'm in here next week, if the Lord allows me, I'm going to continue to talk about his giving, the giving that, that, that we're to do, and, and then the expectation. But first, once we bring our tithes into the storehouse, we need to have a, uh, 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 an attitude of gratitude. How's that? I like that. You like that? You like that? An attitude of gratitude. Hallelujah. When we have an attitude of gratitude, guess what? Woo! We're blessed because we're thankful for everything that God's given us. And when you come thankful for everything that God's given you, you're going to understand that God wants to give you more, but in order to get more, you have to give. To get more. Because if you're, it's just like Psalms 23. He says, my cup, he, he fills my cup, and it's running over. But in order for that cup to continue to be filled, it has to run over. And that's what he's doing to us. It has to run over, and then as it runs over, it goes to a different situation and different places. And that's what happens with the blessings that God gives us. It runs over, so in order for us to obtain and to be able to have room for more, we have to give it away. We have to give away what's running over in our lives. And I'm not just talking about dollars, please. I'm talking about our whole life. We have to do it. See, I, I believe me and my wife that, that, that God is pouring out upon us and, and things are running over. Now, does that mean we don't have trouble with our vehicles? No. Does that mean we don't have this and that to, to take care of? No, it doesn't. But what it does mean is that when situations come, I'm running out of time here, I'm sorry, but when situations come in our lives, we've learned, instead of saying, oh me, oh my, oh God, we learn to say, God, how can we handle this? And then we get into an attitude of praise. Then we get into an attitude of thanksgiving. We get into an attitude of gratitude. And that's what we need. That's where we need to be at when we give. See, when you give, don't give sadly. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And I've always told people when I was doing the offering and stuff and our church and stuff, I always told people, if you can't give cheerfully, don't give. If you're going to walk up here, act like you're baptized in pickle juice because you have to give with a sad face, don't keep it. It's unpleasing to God. Be happy, be joyous to give. Rejoice when you're given. Rejoice when you're give, for, given. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah, to God be the glory that I'm able to walk with my head up high, that I have dominion and authority over this earth, that I can say, because God says he rebukes the devourer for me. He rebukes it for me. Why? Because I'm obedient to him. He rebuked the devourer for you. 
Why? Because if you're obedient to him, I dare you. If you're a tither, you need to pray over your tithe, and you're saying, well, it's not coming back. You need to get a hold of Malachi, and you need to start repeating it over and over again. And if you're giving at the same time you're tithing, you get a hold of Luke 6.38. God says, if I give, it shall be. If I tithe, he will open the windows of heaven. See, we need to take the two of them and put them together and understand that when we give, we're going to receive the blessings from God. It may not be the blessings that I think I need at that time, but it's going to be a blessing. You might just run into somebody and be able to talk to them and, hear, and listen to their words. That's a blessing. Why? Because you're able to hear from them. God's put you in that part, in that place to listen. Sometimes we need to just listen and keep our mouth shut when people's talking. Sometimes we need to hear. Sometimes we need to talk. Sometimes we need to bring out the word to them. God said this. God said that. And that's all it is to it. And if God said it, I believe it. And, that, and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. One more scripture, then we're going to shut. Listen. We do communion here every Sunday. And I picked this, well, this scripture here is for a purpose. It says, and he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, this is, and take this, the cup. Notice what he says. Take this cup and divide it amongst yourselves. And then he took the bread and said, take this bread and give thanks. For, and he gave thanks for it. And he broke it and gave it unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given unto you. Do this in remembrance of me. See, that's a way of thanksgiving. That's gratitude. When we take his communion, we're, we're being gratitude. What's that got to do with the tithe? Everything. Because he said, take this and, and, and share it among all of you. Share it among yourselves. Separate it. Give it to those that, are, that, that need it. You... Oh, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Then Ephesians 1, 3. I, I got it. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, who, somebody say who with me, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. See, all of our blessings are not physical. They're spiritual. That's what we need to understand. Even though we do things physically, there's a spiritual blessing coming from it. There's a spiritual blessing. Maybe you need wisdom for something. God says in His Word, if you ask wisdom, I'll give it to you. He says that in James. He says, I'll give it to you liberally. In other words, I ain't holding nothing back if you ask me for it. Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. Jesus says, ask in my name and the Father will give it to you. Now, I, there's a whole lot of meaning to that, but I ain't got time to go into it. But when we ask God for something that's favorable for our blessings, He will bring it and give it to us. Maybe not the way that we want to see it, but He gives it to us. He gives it to us His way. His way. See, God is good all the time. Hallelujah, yes, and all the time. Listen to what Ephesians 5, 20 says. I, I got to keep going here. Giving thanks always, listen, giving thanks always for all things unto God. When we give our tithes and our offerings, we're to give them with thanksgiving. We're to give them, God, thank you that I can bring in my tithes and offerings, that I'm not afraid that you won't meet my needs. See, that's, that's what happens with most of us. We're afraid that God won't meet our needs if we do what He commands us to do. But the Bible said right there, we just read it in Malachi, it says, prove me, prove me, prove me. Glory be to God, we need to prove Him. You say, well, that's not kosher. Well, it, it can be a kosher or unkosher, but God's Word said it. And if God's Word said it, that settles it. So guess what? I'm bringing my tithes in and I'm going to prove to you, God, that you're going to meet my needs. That you're going to rebuke the devourer that's trying to destroy me and my household. Stop. And you're going to find out that God will help you in all your needs. 
And it, let me go on and re- finish reading that in Ephesians 5.20. It says, Giving thanks unto God always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.6 Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When we bring in our tithes and offerings, we need to let God know that we're doing it. We need to let the devil know that we're doing it. And we need to say, God, here, I'm doing this, and we have a need. This, this last Sunday, my wife and I, we have a need, okay? And, and, and we, we have a, a, a need, something that's, that's, that we need from, from. And we're praying. We're giving our time. We've got a hold of that. God, we need our answer, and we need that favor from you. From that answer. We need it God. I'm proving you. And you know what? It's going to come to pass. Because God says I'll find favor. That I will find favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's close. Would you please? Just uh, right now. Well let me read Revelation. (laughs) I'm sorry. God won't let me go. Let me read Revelation 7.12. At the end of it, it says, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever. Woo! Glory! You've got, you missed a good time to shout or missed a good time to say, Oh me, oh my. Listen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever. That's what we say when we say to God, God, here it is. Here's my tithes. Here's my offerings. I'm bringing them to you. Why? Why? Why am I bringing them to you? Because you commanded me to. Why am I giving to someone that, 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 that has a need? Because God said, if you see your brother and sister in need, try to meet that need for them. He didn't say, let them take advantage of you. He said, help them. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this day. Lord, I I know this message. I I don't know who all is listening to it, who all continue to listen to it. But Father, I just pray that it will touch the hearts. Lord, I just ask that people become obedient to you and your word, Father God. Father, I I speak these words about tithing and giving. I I didn't even touch, touch, I didn't even get to the opening yet, Lord God. But I ask you, Father God, to bless all those that are listening. Lord, if there's any out there that don't know you, call them into your kingdom right now, Father. Just let them say, Jesus, forgive me. Hallelujah. I want you to respond. I want you to let us know here. My name's Pastor J.R. Wells, in case I didn't say that at the beginning. I don't think I did, but Pastor J.R. Wells. And uh, you can reach me on Facebook. And you can reach me in Messenger. But we love to hear from you. But most of all, we love for you to get obedient to God and begin to do what God's called us to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for listening. Amen and amen.